Lincoln Heights, California at the esteemed Yard Muay Thai with a gentleman who is fighting for the California State Cruiserweight title. Edgar Barber, how are you, man? I'm good, man. How are you? Good, good, man. So, I mean, this is a big fight. Uh, you and you know, Arcalone are running it back from uh, your last fight at uh, Knockouts Promotion. Right, uh, right. How does it feel to be uh, stepping in the cage with Daniel again? Um, it's real exciting. I know he's a tough guy. I'm not taking him for granted at all. Uh, he's a real tough dude. He was in my face the whole fight, all three, three minute rounds. Real experienced, so I know he had a couple fights after. I had a couple fights. He's on a little win streak. So uh, it's gonna be fun, man. I'm not, I'm, I'm looking forward to this fight. I'm trying to have some fun with it. And we're gonna see what's up. We're gonna see who comes out on top because uh, he likes to bang, but I don't know. You know what I mean? He likes to throw hands, but I don't know. So we're gonna see, it should be fun though. Now, I mean, obviously there's uh, easier ways to earn a paycheck, man. So uh, yeah. how did you become aware of the sport of mixed martial arts? Well, to be honest, I was just kind of, I was on the uh, Monopoly McDonald's diet, trying to get that Monopoly or whatever. And I put on some weight and I was trying to get back to, I wasn't playing football no more and I was trying to get back in shape. I was gonna do boxing. And one of my coworkers actually said, like, hey, there's a gym by the house and it's Muay Thai. So I looked it up and it seemed dope. I came in, took the class, and then I just kind of never left. You know what I mean? It was just kind of stuck. And then I sucked at first. I hated it. It was so hard, but I don't know. I just kind of was drawn to it. I've always been drawn to the science of boxing itself. And then once I learned how kicking worked and I saw a couple clips of Joe Schilling and Kevin Ross and all these guys, I was like, oh, this was up. Like, you know what I mean? Real aggressive. Like, I like that style, so, I don't know. It just kind of called me, you know? That's yeah. how it just kind of picked me. I didn't really pick it. Now, uh, what's the biggest uh, change that you see in yourself? Obviously, you came from football, you know? Uh, you know, MMA is a very different sport, a very yeah. different attitude. Uh, what have you learned, your, learned within yourself in this transition as, like, a mixed martial artist? Um, I just feel that in football you have to rely a lot on a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? You have to depend, or just any team sport in general, you have to depend on everybody to do their part. And here you kind of have to do that, but that's in the training camp, you know what I mean? Once it comes down to the fight and the nitty gritty, it's on you to get in there and execute everything that you worked on and just kind of adapt to what's going on. So it's all really on you and it just kind of melts you more, um, how do you it makes you just more accountable of your actions while you're in there, you know what I mean? So. The biggest thing for me is just the mentality. You know, I couldn't, I can't put the blame on anybody else but myself if anything happens. So um, I think that's really what it is, just accepting the fact that whatever mistake you make, that's your mistake because you made it. You know what I mean? So I don't know, I kind of think that transition is all around, like in the cage, outside the cage, just in your everyday life. So I think that's the biggest change is just the mental growth that I've been able to gain from MMA. Now, obviously, I mean, that's football team sport, MMA, you know, kind of, once the cage door closes, man, I mean, it's all you, you know? Yeah, yeah, and that's the that's a scary part. Everything's all good until they shut that cage and then it's like, are you ready to go? It's like, I can't say no, you know what I'm saying? What I'm gonna do now, hold on, I'm gonna walk out, like, nah. So, yeah, that's, that's the scary part, but then once they say, are you ready, you're ready, and you just go for it, and then that's it, man, you just handle business. That's really what, I guess, why I do this for that feeling right there, you know? But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, now, obviously, man, uh, this is, I mean, a big win class, you're a big dude, Michael Bowen's a big dude, yeah. you know, uh, you're fighting for big time title, man, the talent rich uh, region of SoCal is being represented for the Camel State title. Um, do you have any kind of uh, special things that you've done to prepare for this fight versus the others that you've uh, done so far? Um, I just think like with every training camp, you kind of grow and you kind of see where you're at. And I, honestly, to me, I just feel like this fight's going to be who has the best cardio. You know, we know he has heart. I got heart. We all have the will to win. It's just going to be like who can has, who has the best cardio really to last either the three rounds or to put somebody away or recover or whatever. But, I think that's what it's going to come down to, just a gas tank. Um, but really, I've been, I've just been getting ready year round, whether it's helping some of my teammates like get ready for their fights, or I'm in a training camp and stuff like that. Like I, 
I stay in training camp basically, you know, so I'm just sharpening up my tools. Sometimes I don't even know the stuff that I'm working. That's just working while I'm sparring. And there's other stuff that I'm actually consciously working on, you know, so like I said, I think for right now it's just the cardio. That's the only difference. I'm trying to get my cardio even better. Um, but that's really it. Damn right. So for people coming to the Sportsman's Log September 8th for Fighters Rep 4, what can they expect? Oh, a show for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like everywhere I go, no matter when, lose, wherever I fight, like I'm coming to fight regardless. Like people know when they fight me, you know, everybody somehow or other says, I hit hard, but obviously they're not dropping, so I'm not hitting hard enough. But, you know, I am I come out of bang always, and just a scrap, so uh, Daniel, same thing. He comes out, he likes to stay in that pocket, no hands, so you guys want to see somebody possibly get knocked out, you know what I'm saying? Want to see a lot of gore, like come through and check out the main event for sure. You know, I got my boy as well, Chuko. Shout out to him, he's getting down. That's another firework uh, fight. He's coming out with the bang too, so y'all gotta come check us out. Dang right, and uh, if they wanna kinda follow your rise uh, into the Fighters Rep cage, where can they find you on social media, my man? Yeah, so uh, Facebook is just regular, my name, Edgar Barberi, um, and then Instagram is at Barberi Fitness, Ye, Y-E-E. -E. Um, so yeah, y'all can follow me on that, I'll be posted on Instagram mainly. Um, Facebook, y'all see all the other fun stuff I'll be doing, so yeah, y'all hit me up right there. There you go, man. We can't wait to see you step inside the cage for the California State Cruiserweight title on Friday's Rep 4, September 8th. Andrew, thank you for your time, my man. Thank you.